8.55 Eastern Time. And Columbia and its affiliated stations bring you Elmer Davis and the news. Again today, the only war losses fall on the neutral. A Norwegian freighter sunk in the North Sea, just how we don't know, and an Italian freighter damaged in collision with an American ship outside a British port to which they had both been taken for inspection for contraband. The whereabouts of the city of Flint are still a mystery. Our embassy in Berlin asked the German government where it was, and in contrast with the experience of the Moscow embassy, at least got a straightforward answer. The Germans said they didn't know. Dispatches from Moscow say that the Russian papers have printed less than a hundred words about the case. They've carried a good deal more than that on the Senate's repeal of the arms embargo. The newspaper Pravda said today that the repeal shows what the bourgeoisie means by neutrality. Russia's Supreme Soviet Council meets on Tuesday, and rumors come out of Berlin that it may announce measures that will mean the turning point of the war, perhaps the conclusion of a formal military alliance with Germany. But this is reminiscent of stories that have come from Berlin before now about what Russia is going to do, or, as it was in the early weeks of the war, what Italy is going to do, rumors that turned out to be without foundation. We do know some things that the Russians are doing, however. Their troops marched into Latvia today, on their way to occupy the naval and air bases on the Baltic lately ceded to Russia. As the Russian troops came in, they found the roads clogged for miles by the automobiles and horse-drawn vehicles of Germans on their way to the ports, leaving the country where their ancestors had lived for centuries to settle in their new homes in conquered Poland. Russian garrisons have already taken their new stations in Estonia. In Lithuania, third of the states where Russia is establishing bases, the Red Army has not started to march in yet, but is likely to come in this week. Meanwhile, since the Russians turned the city of Vilna, Lithuania's old capital, back to the Lithuanian government, the Lithuanian premier sent a message today to the Russians declaring that his people are imbued with sincere gratitude to the people of the Soviet Union and their leader Stalin. A few days ago, the newly elected Assembly of Western Ukraine, that is the southern part of the territory that Russia took from Poland, voted to join the Soviet Union. Today, an assembly elected in the northern part of the occupied regions, Western White Russia, took similar action declaring that the Soviet power alone can rid the peoples of white Russia of exploitation, want, hunger, and oppression. All these areas, of course, are now occupied by the Red Army. Thus, the Russian frontier comes back to about where it was before the defeat by the Poles in the War of 1920. But the Russian negotiations with Finland still drag on. We hear now that the Finnish delegation won't go back to Moscow until Tuesday and doesn't expect to resume discussions till the latter part of the week. This delay seems to indicate that there will be a peaceful solution. At least the Russians are not pressing the Finns for quick action. Today, thousands of people gathered before the American legation in Helsinki, the Finnish capital, and the Coral Society serenaded the minister in gratitude for our government's moral support of Finland. Later, the crowd moved on to the Swedish, Danish, and Norwegian legations and serenaded them, too. But Helsinki had another blackout last night. They're still ready for whatever may happen. Our neutrality bill goes to the House of Representatives this week, with debate to begin on Tuesday and a vote expected Thursday or Friday. If repeal of the embargo passes by a margin of as much as 25 votes, it's about as much as its export supporters expect. Our Washington correspondent, Mr. Warner, earlier this evening quoted Representative Rankin, Democrat of Mississippi, as saying that if this embargo is retained, war will never start. The peoples of England and Germany, said Mr. Rankin, don't want war and won't have it unless we agitate it. A somewhat similar view was expressed in a speech tonight by Representative Bruce Barton, Republican, who proposed that we keep the, re the possibility of repeal of the embargo suspended like a sword over the belligerents' heads if they don't make peace now. But that suspended sword may take quite a while to fall. The theory that the belligerents are waiting to see what Congress does about the embargo, particularly that the Germans are waiting for that to make an all-out attack, seems about as thin as the hope of some British newspapers that now the Allies can get 5,000 airplanes from American factories. American factories now producing military aircraft would take nearly a year and a half to turn out that many planes, and it must be remembered that a good part of their capacity is already absorbed by contracts with our own government. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>